In this video, I'm going to look at some problem solving questions to do with straight line graphs. The first question says the points A, A, A squared, B, 2A, A and C, A plus 12, negative 2A squared are collinear. Find the value of A. So we are given three points, A, B and C, and we're told they are collinear, meaning that we can draw a straight line through those three points. This means that there is a relationship between those points. And one of the things that allows us to solve this problem is the fact that between any two points on a straight line, the gradient is the same. Uh, so the way we find the gradient, which we usually label as M, is to calculate the rise over the run. So if we look at the two points B and C, we could draw a horizontal line, from B to C and then a vertical line up to C. The vertical distance we call the rise, the horizontal distance we call the run, and we can calculate that with this formula, y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. And if we looked at the gradient between A and B, that would be the same. So let's find that gradient then using these points. So we're going to end up with some algebraic fractions. The first gradient between A and B, using these points we can do y2 take y1 so y2 is a, y1 is a squared. So the numerator here is a take a squared. The denominator is x2, 2a take x1, a. So that's the gradient between a and b. And this will be equal to the gradient between b and c. So let's calculate that now. Uh, now you can do it either way. You can do y1 take y2 or y2 take y1 and you will still get the same answer. So for b and c I'm actually doing it the other way around. I'm going to do y1 subtract y2 so a take negative 2a squared in the numerator here and 2a which is x1 take x2 so 2a subtract a plus 12. This gives me an equation with a being the unknown and I can solve this for A. So the key point you can take away from this question is that uh, between any two points on a straight line, the gradient will be the same. Okay, let's take this equation now and solve for A. So here's the equation. Uh, let's simplify first. So on the left-hand side, we can factorize an A out from both terms. So on the left-hand side, we'll have A times one take A, and two A take A is A. And over here, a take negative 2a squared is a plus 2a squared. And 2a subtract a is just a. And negative positive 12 is negative 12. Okay, so we've simplified this down a little bit. We could simplify further. We could cancel these a's on the left-hand side. So we have 1 take a. Just that from the numerator left over. And I've left the right-hand side as is for now. Next, we can multiply by this denominator, this a take 12. So multiply both sides by a take 12, and then we'll have one take a multiplied by a take 12 equals a plus two a squared. Then expand those brackets out. So first, one times a is a, outers, one times negative 12 is negative 12, then negative a times a is negative a squared, and negative a times negative 12 is positive 12 a, and the right-hand side I've left as is and then simplify the left-hand side. So we can add those like terms together. 12a plus a is 13a, and I've rearranged the order so that we have the negative a squared first and the negative 12 on the end there. Okay, let's keep simplifying. We want all of the terms on the same side, so we could add that a squared to the right-hand side, take the 13a, add the 12, and we'll end up with 3a squared take 12a plus 12, equals zero. Then see if there are any common factors. Can you see any common factors in that equation? Each term has a factor of three, so let's divide everything by three and we'll end up with a squared take four a plus four and this is what is known as a perfect square. So we can factorize this into one bracket squared and this will be a take two all squared equals zero. What value must a have in order for this to be zero? a must be 2. So therefore a equals 2 and we are done. Just going back to the question, you can figure out what all these points are now. a would be 2, 4, b would be 4, 2, c would be 14 and negative 8. And you could also go ahead and find the equation of that line if you wanted to as well. 
Okay, next problem. This one says p is on the line y equals 2x plus 5 such that p is a distance of square root of 15 from the origin. Find the two possible positions of point p. If you weren't sure how to begin solving this, what you could start with is to draw a graph of that straight line. So it might look something like this. So you draw up your axes and then it will have a y-intercept of 5 and a gradient of 2. It doesn't have to be exact, uh, just a sketch to figure out what's going on. And P is a point on this line that is the square root of 15 away from the origin. The origin is 0, 0 here at the center. So you could draw in some lines to estimate where the solutions might be. So you could draw a line here. Now the square root of 15 is just less than 4. So, you know, try to make your lines, you know, between 3 and 4 in length, just estimating. So this line I would think is longer than 3 because 3 is here. So it's going to be a bit longer than 3 and maybe just less than 4. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. But what this does is it tells me this coordinate will probably have a negative x coordinate and a positive y coordinate and there'll be another point over here so you could draw a line with the same length in this direction that gives you another point on that line that's why we're going to get two solutions here so there are the two points that we could estimate other solutions and we could label these x1 y1 and x2 y2 and to solve this problem we can use the distance formula to calculate the coordinates so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So here is a close up of that graph again, and we're just going to pick one of the points. So x2, y2 as an example point. And the first thing we'll start with is the distance formula. So the distance formula says uh, any distance on a straight line graph can be given by the square root of the second coordinate, the second x coordinate, take the first x coordinate squared, plus the second y-coordinate take the first y-coordinate squared. This is basically Pythagoras' theorem. Now in this question, we're given the distance of square root of 15 and we need to find the coordinate. So the distance is not the unknown, the coordinates are the unknown. And also, because the distance is from the origin, x1 and y1 will both be zero. So x1, y1 are zero, zero. Um, so we're really only worrying about x2 and y2 so we would have x2 squared and y2 squared. And also notice that uh, any point on this line needs to satisfy this equation. So y2 will equal 2 times x2 plus 5. So we can substitute this in for y2 and solve for the x coordinate. So substituting those points in then, we get the distance of square root of 15 equal to the square root of x2 squared plus 2x2 plus 5 all squared. I hope you can see how I've produced that equation. And uh, this is an equation with one unknown that we're going to be able to solve. Now I'm going to just write this in terms of x. I'm going to get rid of that 2 there just so it looks a bit neater. And we can square both sides to get rid of the square roots. So squaring both sides, we get 15 equal to x squared plus 4x squared plus 20x plus 25, expanding out those brackets there. And then simplifying this further, uh, we could uh, combine like terms. So we get 5x squared plus 20x plus 10. Um, so x squared plus 4x is 5x squared. And also I subtracted 15 from the right hand side. So 25 take 15 is 10. Look for any common factors. Can you see a common factor between all of those terms? All of these numbers are factors of five. So let's divide by five and we get x squared plus 4x plus 2 equal to 0. Now we cannot factorize this quadratic, so we could either use the quadratic formula or completing the square. If we use completing the square, this will be x plus 2 all squared plus 2 take 4, so you take half that coefficient of x, that goes inside the brackets, and then you subtract that number squared. So x plus 2 all squared plus 2 subtract 2 squared. And then Simplify, so we get x plus 2 squared take 2 equal to 0. And add that 2 to the side, take the square root. We get x equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 take 2. So they are my x coordinates of the two points. And now we need to find the y coordinates. So substitute those x coordinates into the equation of the straight line. 
So we'll have y equal to 2 times plus or minus square root of 2 take 2 plus 5. If you expand out those brackets and simplify it, we get the y coordinates of uh, y equals plus or minus 2 root 2 plus 1. So we'd have a negative 4 plus 5, which is plus 1. So we have our coordinates and let's just see what that would look like. This point here would be uh, root 2 take 2 and 2 root 2 plus 1. And this one down here would be negative root 2 take 2 negative 2 root 2 plus 1. And just as we estimated, this is a negative x value, this is a positive y value, and this point down here, they are both negative. Okay, so hope you found those problems interesting. Thanks for watching.